Dragon Pokemon are some of the most powerful Pokemon in the games, but they start off quite weak and they evolve really late. So I was curious, would I be able to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Scarlet using just Dragon Pokemon? Well, here are the rules I was following. Only Dragon Pokemon are allowed. If they faint, they're dead for good. My Pokemon can't overlevel the next gym leader's ace. Plus, I won't be using heal items in battle and set mode is on, meaning I can't switch out when it asks me to. But that doesn't seem hard enough. So I'm also only gonna use shiny Pokemon. That means we're gonna have a full team or more of shiny dragon boys. And since dragon Pokemon are some of my favorite Pokemon, seeing them all in their shiny glory is going to be magnificent. But if I was to lose one, that might make me cry. So when you think of powerful dragon Pokemon, you probably think of beasts like Rayquaza, Dialga, or even Garchomp. But what would my first dragon Pokemon be? It was the indomitable, illustrious, indestructible, draconic beast, the all powerful Apple. Okay, so Applin is the first Pokemon I was gonna hunt, and the best place to do it wasn't even in Paldea. I could hunt on this tree where I can't even see the Pokemon, or I could run over to Kitakami and hunt in the Apple Field. But turns out that wasn't much better, so I just decided to breed some. And a few hours later, we find it. Oh, Johnny Applin! Green Apple Baby! Let's go! And name it Colors. But now I realize our first battle is with Katie and she's a bug specialist who is going to be super effective against our little apple. On top of that, there are no other dragons available to us this early. So, uh... I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Turns out, thankfully, Applin doesn't evolve by level up, and instead with an evolution item, of which there are three. Either the Tart Apple, Sweet Apple, or Syrupy Apple. So now we have the biggest decision to make, and that is, which evolution will I pick? I picked Diplin. I picked Diplin. Woo, golden apple, baby! I hear if you eat one of these, you get health regen and also extra hearts. Okay, maybe that's the wrong game, but let's go and see if Diplin can't take down Katie. So here's the thing, Diplin is a dragon type, but it's also a grass type, meaning it's weak to bug. And what does Katie specialize in? Bug, that's right. Her first Pokemon is Nimble, and it has access to Struggle Bug, which not only deals super effective damage, but also lowers my special attack. The next Pokemon Tarantula has access to Bug Bite, so if I gave Diplin a berry, it could eat it instead. And finally, her Terra Bug Teddy Ursa will ramp up damage with its Fury Cutter, meaning if I don't take it out quick, it will spell the end of the run. Little side tangent here, after doing more research after evolving Diplin, if I had evolved this little Applin into Appleton, this would have been a way easier fight, as Appleton actually learns rollout, and then we could have just rolled out on every single one of her Pokemon. But we didn't do that, and we've got a shiny Diplin, so let's see what happens. So to begin, I send in the Golden Apple to fight her Stick Bug, and it immediately struggle bugs, lowering my special attack. However, this was expected, and I raised my defense with Withdraw. I do this the following turn as well, but on turn three, we get smacked with a critical hit and we are dropped down to just 18 HP. Thankfully, I did pick up a citrus berry which activates restoring some health, bringing me back up to 31 HP. From here I use the move recycle which recycles the used citrus berry and allows me to eat it again, bringing us to a total of 36 HP with three stages raised in defense. But also our special attack was down by four, so I guess I won't be using dragon breath. At least I had body slam which I expected to take out nimble, but I guess guess not. But it did paralyze it, meaning we outspeed it the following turn and take it down. Her next Pokemon Tarantula does have access to Bug Bite, which would have ate my berry if I had not already consumed it twice, technically. <laughs> but it didn't matter though, as Diplin lands a beautiful crit, outspeeding it and knocking it out in just one move. Oh! Diplin crit! Let's go! Okay, this left just her Terra Teddy Ursa, and this thing is freaking scary, man. If it gets the chance to build up the Fury Cutter, we are screwed, regardless of our defense boost. Unless we crit or, or paralyze. Paralyze! Oh! Okay, I was... Uh, what the hell? Okay, we've done it! Body slam! Oh, yes! Go Diplin! Oh my god! Now, um, all I'm gonna say is, uh, if Diplin had access to the Dragon Terra type, that would not have even been close. Moving on to our next battle, the Titan Cloth was no cause for concern whatsoever, as we terrestrialized, sea bombed it, and called it a day. With Cloth defeated, I decided to go pick up my next Pokemon, and turns out I could have picked this up before my battle with Katie. 
but being a ground type, it wouldn't have been much use anyway. So I hunted for a few hours, and I eventually found it. The shiny land shark. Shiny gibble, baby. Let's freaking go. <laughs> Generations joined the team. Next up is Brassius, and his grass Pokemon wouldn't even phase Diplin. So we kept our adorable little Gibble safe in its Pokeball, knocking out all three of his Pokemon with a boosted Dragon Breath. Yeah, you think you're cool jumping? I can jump too, man. Ooh, I can play that game. After this is the Flying Titan, which is super effective against my main man, Diplin, and I don't think Gibble will fare much better. So I decided to go and hunt for the only other available Dragon Pokemon below the level cap, of course, being Silazar. Oh, it was there. Shiny Silazar, that, it was there. It was there. It, that was definitely it. No, you stupid. Ah. Oh. No, no. So naturally I switched to the Masuda method, being quite frustrated by these things. And eventually, I got what I was looking for. Oh! Shiny Salazar! Let's freaking go! This is the third one! It's finally in my possession! Oh my god! Can't run away if I find you in an egg! Ha, huh, Silazar! I named it Mania and went to take on the Sky Titan. Before going into the battle, I taught both Silazar and Gibble Thunderfang. Gibble, just in case. Silazar does enough to two-shot it with a Thunderfang, but unfortunately misses. So Silazar is dropped to just 10 HP before knocking it out. Now, if you didn't know, with every other Titan in this game, you get the opportunity to heal between each phase. But for Bombardier, okay, we're through the first phase, that's what matters. We're through the first phase, that's what matters. We don't get the chance to heal, so we could very well lose a Pokemon here very easily. They just don't allow it. And instead, we are thrown straight into the next battle, and Silazar is still on just 10 HP. Meaning, I have to switch out to Gibble, who is definitely not as strong. Now... I just have to pray this bird attacks Arvin in order to not go down here. And fortunately, he does, letting me land a few Thunderfangs and his Knackly drops some rocks on it, ultimately securing me the win. Let's go, Arvin. This takes me to the first star base. But the real star is you for watching the video and subscribing because that's just straight up awesome and I appreciate you. The first star base is a dark star base and I'm gonna keep it real with you. This was pretty easy. We knock out his Ponyard with a super effective bulldoze and then switching to Diplin, we eventually knock out his super powered car even though it did survive a seed bomb on the smallest slither of slithering little slithery health. But with Gear Como defeated, we could press on to the land of Lavincia. We ran into Nimona here, but our pale little Salazar dealt with her swiftly. Ha 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 ha! Take that, Nimona. I completed this Psychopath Iono's Gym Challenge. RJ, why is she a psycho? Cuz, who the heck was sharpening their teeth like that? That just makes no sense. To my surprise, I had no idea that Gibble evolved this early, but it turns out it does, and it evolved into Gabite, giving it a much needed boost to its stats. We take out Watchful and Luxio with Gabite, and brought Belly Bolt to half, which then gave Gibble an opportunity to set up with growth and take me out. And in comes her Miss Magius. Miss Magius? Miss Magius? I don't know. Okay, so we're three stage raised in our special attack. Is it enough to take out Miss Magius with Dragon Breath? It should be. Oh, we slip out of confusion first turn. Dragon Breath, take this thing out. Okay, we didn't take it out. Failing to knock it out, I swap out to Salazar, who's immune to ghost moves at least, and knocks it out with a breaking swipe. Now at this point, I could have gone and got another shiny, but I felt confident enough taking on the fire star boss, Mila, with the team I had. And I was right to assume that. Gabite took down her Torkoal, but sustained decent damage from the sun boosted overheat from the Starmobile. So I swapped over to Salazar as the sun faded, and we slowly whittled it down with Breaking Swipe, which also reduced its attack stat, allowing Diplin to safely finish the job. Okay, RJ, did you go get a, another shiny now? Like, surely, you, you still only have three shinies and we're pretty far into the video. You're gonna go get another one, right? Well, turns out I could have gone and caught Jang Moo, but to be honest, I forgot the thing even existed and went to take on the Steel Titan without it. The giant worm of the earth? Huh, guess I didn't need it anyway. This was extremely easy. Flitches as well, I love this. Oh my god. I don't think I've ever had a problem with this Titan ever. Like, not a single time. I mean, if any of 
one has watched like all of my videos in Scarlet and Violet, let me know. Have I ever lost a Pokemon or anything to the Steel Titan or even struggled with it? Because from memory, I don't think I have. Alright, surely he goes and gets one now, right? Actually, I did. Just past the water gym on the way to complete the gym challenge, I stopped by a cave and hunted for the Minty Man, Noibat. Oh, shiny Noibat! Shiny Noibat! Shiny Noibat! I'll try and quick ball it. I already have one anyway in a nice ball, so quick ball will do. One, two, three. Boom, baby! Gotcha, Noibat. I named it Boom and headed back to Kaskarafa to take on Kofu. Being a water specialist, the whole team resists or is at least neutral to water types, meaning we had an easy time cleaning it up. Diplom took a little bit of damage from Veluza's pluck at the beginning, but took it and Wugtrio out with a seed bomb. With only three Pokemon, all that was left was his Crabominable and... Oh, uh, uh, goodbye, Senor Crab. Well, now I'm halfway done through collecting all the badges in the game and all I have is four shiny Pokemon to my name. And to be honest, I agree with you guys, that's kind of pathetic. So off I went to catch another shiny Pokemon, one that I had actually wanted for forever. Right now, I'm hunting for Skrull, a Pokemon I have wanted shiny since my very first shiny only video ever, over a year ago on the channel. I was going to get it in my purple shiny only video as well, and also my poison shiny only video, but every single time I was gonna get it, I picked the wrong version and Skrull couldn't be acquired. But this time, this time, I was finally gonna get this shiny piece of kelp. Okay, well, that's not shiny scrope. Uh, and that's also not shiny scrope. Oh, 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 what's, what, what's that? Um, yeah, that, that also is not a shiny scrope. Ah! So after wasting a few hours of my life that I will never get back, I decided to leave Skrulp and attempt to get it later in a location where only it spawns. You got away this time, Skrulp, but mark my words, I will find you. <laughs> so instead I went off to find Jang Moo. Now this Pokemon is pretty divisive. Some people love him, some people hate him, and I'd love to know what you guys think. Because personally, I really like it, and I really like it shiny, but I get that some people don't, and I'd love to hear why. But I ended up finding the shiny pink scale boy on the following day. Oh, Johnny! Woo, baby! Yeah! Woo! Shiny Jagbo! But I have the perfect day for it. Unleashed! Naming it Unleashed, we head over to the Tag Tree Thicket. And it doesn't evolve until level 35, so I decided to take it on with Gabite. Atticus, the star base leader, is pretty cool since he can actually do a backflip and he's like dressed up like a ninja, which I, I personally think is pretty cool. But what's cooler is absolutely destroying his first three Pokemon with Dig and healing with leftovers. This brought us to the car where things went horribly, horribly wrong. Spin out shouldn't take us out, right? Cool, okay. If we had speed next turn now because of that. Shit! Wait! No! Gabite. Woo! <laughs> God damn it! We lost Gabite. Okay. Um, rip generations. Not gonna lie, that hurts. That hurts. Well, uh, that's a little disappointing, but at least you guys never have to see the god-awful shiny that is Garchomp. Larry the Normal Specialist is next, and Jangmoo evolved into Hakamo at just the right time. Being a fighting type should come in quite useful for this normal gym. Hakamo took out Kamala, but did get put to sleep, but since my IQ is higher than one, I gave it a Chesto Berry, and it woke up instantly. But because my IQ is only just above one. I forgot this thing had glare. We get full paralyzed for the next two turns and now I'm forced to switch out. I send in Diplin and do barely any damage to it as it brings us to red. Cool. This is going very well, clearly. So I send in Silazar and Terrastalize it, failing to take it out, meaning it gets to paralyze us again. Glare? Brother, this guy stinks! Oh, we have Shed Skin, so we got rid of that. So that was pointless, good job. Alright, cool. Leaving just his Star Raptor, but the only star is you. Wait, I already made that joke. It terrestrializes, but with breaking swipes, we reduce its attack stat, meaning we can outpace its damage and finish it off. Oh! oh! I was about to go into the ultimate fever pitch screaming moment, but we've done it. It survived our 
freaking what I mean? What a beast! Silas, oh, let's freaking go and take down that Star Raptor! Let's go! Woo, baby! Honestly, that has made me hungry in real life. I'm pretty sure the same thing happened in the last video. I fought Larry, I got hungry, and then I remember now I didn't get to eat because goddamn Nimona battles me right now. And you know what? The same thing's about to happen. Hakamaru deals with all of Nimona's Pokemon, and now we can head off to the ghost gym. Well, first I decided to go hunt for another dragon, and this one had a secondary typing that matches up beautifully against Rhyme and a ghost Pokemon. Oh! Johnny Dino! Johnny Dino! Shiny do 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 Hey, it's green. It's black. It's green and black. Let's freaking go. I named it Frontiers, but this thing doesn't evolve until level 50. But it does have decent stats for being a base dragon. And it is a dark type, so it should still be useful. Oh, nice huge dog. How much should I mind? Nike TNs, bruh. I wouldn't mind some of those myself, bruh. Hand them over, you gronk. If I beat you in a battle, bruh, you gotta hand over your shoes, you gronk. Hesh, eh? Hesh, bruh. I don't know what that was all about, but she's leading with Mimikyu and Burnett, so I send out Silazart and Dino. The first thing I do is terrestrialize, and that's because... It's important to terrestrialize because for some reason the crowd goes... Oh yeah, RJ, well done, bruh. Good job, SH, bruh. You sound super smart, bruh, to terrestrialize your Pokemon, bruh. And then basically, uh, they raise every single one of your Pokemon stats. Silazar fails to knock out Bennett, and Dino breaks Mimikyu's disguise. Mania is brought to half health, but takes out Bennett the following turn as Dino one-shots Mimikyu. This means two more Pokemon come in at the exact same time being Toxtricity and Houndstone. Houndstone is far more scary though because it has play role. I'm reluctant to stay in, but I'm going to, even though I might live to regret that. So we're gonna crunch Houndstone, and we're also gonna crunch Houndstone because I want Houndstone gone because it has play role. That means it's gonna be super effective against every single one of my Pokemon, which I do not like. Yeah, bruh, just has to hope that these bros don't land the play rough, bruh. We shoot out speed, but do we take it out? Oh, Silazar takes it out with a crunch. That's good. Okay, we're not scared of the play rough anymore. Crunch should take out Toxtricity. Magnificent! A beautiful display, bruh! And now, Ryan, bruh, give me a freaking shoes, you doggy gronk! Yeah, like my Nike TNs, bruh! Next up was the Ground Titan, and it was now that I found out how useful Diplin really was. Now, I'm not sure if this was an error in the code, or potentially a hit to a future evolution, but Diplin actually gets a bonus from the Eviolite, which is pretty weird, since I don't think this is supposed to evolve, but okay. So, I went and got it from this representative, and took on the Titan, which went a bit like this. This took us to the Psychic Gym, where Hakamoto evolved super early into its final form. I totally forgot Como evolved this early, but I wasn't going to use it anyway because it's a fighting type, but it's cool nonetheless. On the surface, the Psychic Gym looks simple enough, until you realize she has multiple Pokemon which use Fairy Moves. Thankfully, her first Pokemon for Rigoroth doesn't, so I sent out Silazar to start with. My plan would either go one of two ways. I'd successfully set up and sweep, or get taken out before I even had the chance. So I shift geared on the first turn and it countered with reflect, which meant I'd need to raise my attack at least a plus three to make a difference. So I attempted to do so as it hit us with a zen headbutt, which didn't actually do enough to two shot us. So I made the play for the third attack raise and zen brings us down to just 17 HP. But we have our three stages raised, so I should be able to just sweep with crunch, or not. Huh? Reflect really does that much? Nope. I was ready to lose Silazar there, but it didn't happen, and I'll take it. Alright, that actually works out in our favor, because I think Reflect might wear off uh, right now, so that's amazing. We're three stage raised in attack, we're definitely outspeeding, all we gotta do is make sure uh, our crunch lands, which it should, because it's 100% accurate, so we should be good, right? Right, and so we rolled Crunching Gardevoir, same went for a Spathra, Fire Spathra, and finally in comes Florges. I'm relating it to beauty products. 
I'm so insightful. Come here, my little Florges. It's time for a makeover. You'll become a new you. Yo, this is an insight into the beauty, unrealistic beauty standards that women have to follow nowadays. It's just unobtainable. Everyone has to cake on makeup. And you know what? Women shouldn't have to do that. They shouldn't have to do plastic surgery. This is just a deep social commentary. And meanwhile, we've killed Flogist, and uh, I'm just gonna shut up now. Because we've done it! We beat the gym! And uh, we nearly lost Silas out there, but fortunately, everything worked out. Reaching the next gym, Noibat evolved into Noivern, but as I pondered on the strategy, I decided it would be safest if I went and picked up another Pokemon. And now was the time. The time to finally obtain Shiny Scrop. And by that, I mean hunt for a couple of hours. Uh, this is the worst hunt I've ever done. Okay, I don't know how this is taking longer. Like, I'm getting so unlucky. So unlucky. This is ridiculous. My brain is physically degrading. If you were to open my skull right now and look at it, you would see that it is gradually shrinking and, uh, and shriveling into a husk of a brain. The fact that quillfish can even spawn there scares the living bejeebies out of me. Is that shiny? I can't tell, because it's fucking underwater. Okay, this is getting freaking ridiculous. Is that it? I think that's it. I think that's it. It's not. Why, Scrub? Why do you elude me so? Hours. Days. Weeks. Years. Is that it? Probably not. Oh, it is! Hallelujah, motherfucker! Oh, shiny freaking Skrelp exists. I was beginning to think it didn't. I'm so happy. I've got the perfect name for it. The one, the only superstar. <laughs> Let's freaking go. Okay, slight problem. It's level 48, so I can't evolve it into Dragal for the fight. <laughs> God freaking damn it. Can I not just have one freaking thing? Whatever, we'll have it for the next fight, but damn, that's annoying. So unable to evolve Scrub for this fight, I decided to come up with another strategy instead. So I went to get the Iron Head TM to teach Silazar when I ran into Shiny Cub Chew. I guess that's another Pokemon to give away. I taught Silazar Iron Head and was going to use the same strategy as I did with Tulip. Things started off well as we dodge a blizzard on the first turn and raise our speed and attack with gear shift. That's because I put a focus sash on Silazar, so it can take one hit that's going to take it out, which would be blizzard, which would do... Um... And it no missed! Way. It missed twice in a row! Okay, this is perfect. Next turn, we take out Frostmoth with the Iron Head, and same went for Bear Tick. So Titan in next, however, is where things began to fall apart. With the Iron Head... <laughs> Oh, no, it lived! I spin up. Okay. Thankfully, we live to the focus sash there. That's nice, but we can't use it again. So, shoot out speed, take it out with the iron head. Is. Is. What? Is Ice Shard priority? What? I didn't know that. You're kidding. That was looking so good as well. No, man. Avenging Silazar, I send in Komoro to set up for the Altaria and take out Satite. I'm gonna pray that we survive a hit. No, it has priority. Oh, we're screwed. It's over. If it ice, if it goes for ice spinner again, that's great. If it goes for ice shove, we're screwed. It's over. Okay, let's freaking go! With the Titan down, Altaria terrestrializes, and I pray that Drain Punch does enough to one-shot it. Come on, outspeed! We do! Drain Punch! No. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. We're about to lose, you lose Unleashed, aren't we? It hangs on! It hangs on! It doesn't have a, a, a priority move, so we're good, right? We're good! Okay, we lost Silazar, but we nearly lost Komoo, and that would have been far more devastating, so I'm just glad it hang on, hung on there. Oh my god. So, off I went to replace our little bicycle boy at Casaroya Lake. I wanted sushi, but I guess we're getting this instead. Oh my... What? Okay, guys, I was gonna look for Tatsugiri. I was gonna hunt for Tatsugiri, but you know what? 
I'm not gonna hunt for Tatsugiri if we're gonna get a free freaking Dragonair off the rip. You know what? That's payback for Skrulp, so I will take that. Definitely. 100%. Do not care. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. <laughs> I'll take it since we basically got it instantly, and I guess that's kind of payback for the Skrulp hunt. I named it Adventures, and we pushed on to the Fairy Base. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, the fairy base is next and is potentially the most lethal fight of the run, since all of these Pokemon obviously have advantage over my dragons. However, with the addition of Skrulp, who just evolved into Dragaug, as well as this thing growing an extra head, I guess, this fight may not go how you expect. I start by terrestrializing Dragaug and one shot a Zoomerul with Sludge Bomb. Wigglytuff in next suffered the same fate and in came Dash Bond. Can you guess what happened to it? Wow. You guys are smart, good job. The Starmobile in next goes for Steel Roller, bringing us to half health, but I return the favor, bringing it to half as well. All right. God damn Confuse Ray. I just remembered last time I fought Ortega, what happened here? We hit ourselves like four times in a row. But you're not gonna do that, are you, Superstar? Are you? Yeah, let's go. Almost takes it out, that's nice. Oh my God, I thought we missed. Because it has a 95 base accuracy, I was like, oh, we've missed. But no, we're good. All right. We made it through the, uh, arguably the scariest team star base for any dragon type team. The fairy star base with no losses. So, uh, go us, I guess. And with the fairy star base conquered, we head back to take on the dragon titan. Four back-to-back -back main battles where our team is weak against our opponents. Except that we fight with Dondozo twice, which is actually a water Pokemon. Meaning that we could take it out easily, but when the Dragon Sushi finally did show up, I terrestrialized Grass with Diplin and slowly chunk it down with Dragon Pulse. After this, Dragonair finally evolves into Dragonite, which takes us to the final Team Starbase. And this fight is scary. That's why the leader is known as Eri the Eliminator. But I guess not this time, since our beautiful Noivern has access to acrobatics and literally one shots everything except the card that does take three hits, but it still goes down. And now we can head over to the league. Yay, now we can take her on and absolutely destroy her with Diplin. It's gonna be a beautiful act of decimation. Taking on Rika, I lead with Diplin and terrestrialize it, knocking out Wishcast with a seed bomb. But when Camerop comes in, I decide to switch out to Dragonite who has Aquatel and knock out Camerop. Domfan survives with its ability sturdy, but then goes down the following turn, and Diglett wastes its turn, setting up Sandstorm, so I take it out. But Clodsire, on the other hand, has Water Absorb, meaning we can't use Aquatel. So I decided to switch out to Noivern, who actually takes it out with just two Acrobatics. Sweet. The Infant Steel Specialist is next, but she never had a chance, as I set up with Komoro and Drain punched everything. For Larry, I taught Dragonite Ice Spinner and set up with Dragon Dance against his Tropius. It wasted its only turn using Sunny Day, which then let me one-shot every single one of his Pokemon. Ooh, scary Staraptor trying to intimidate me. Failed! And down it goes, leaving his Flamigo, which doesn't fare any better. Ah, my rival Hassel. Another Dragon Specialist, but... Yours aren't shiny, so I'm not too concerned. Setting up Dragon Dance, boosting our attack stat, we take solid damage from Dragon Pulse, bringing us low, but using Ice Spinner, which is quite effective, we take down Noivern. Flapple is also quad weak to Ice Spinner, so down it goes, and in comes Dragal. Not shiny, by the way. Loser. I have one of those, finally. <laughs> but down it goes, all the same, and in comes Haxorus. I really wish I got a shiny one of these. It's shiny's pretty cool. But down it goes to Dragonite, all the same. Finally, in comes his Baxcalibur, who terrestrializes, but with a simple outrage, this dragon is quelled and sent to the afterlife. Which brings me to Gita, the champion of the region. Oh, so you're approaching me, Gita? Well, just be wary, I'm actually a, a, a dragon gamer, and I'm gonna... Dragon these nuts, oh look, I'll be dragon these nuts. All right. I lead with my apple and terrestrialize it grass to avoid a spath with super effective dazzling gleam. This lets me use growth to raise our attack, but... Oh shit, it has opportunist. I totally forgot. At least we took it out. Surprisingly, she sends in Veluza, a water type next, and quickly I find out why. <laughs> shit, okay. But Ice Fang does barely any damage and we take it out. Avalog in next sounds scary being an ice type, but this thing is very slow and super weak to special attacks, so one little energy ball knocks it out. 
King Gambit in next, I switch to Komoa, who takes it out with a Drain Punch and makes it all the way back to full HP. Gogo is her next Pokemon, and you'd think that I would be able to take it out, but it also has Play Rough, so I decided to swap to Dragao, who takes the Play Rough, but then the next turn, I realize it has Zen Headbutt. Oh, okay, 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 please take it out. Okay, well, shit. With Sludge Bomb failing to take it out, but poisoning it, I swap to Dragonite to set up Dragon Dance, as I anticipate Gogo going down to its poison. Sadly though, it doesn't, and instead lands the play rough on us, resetting my attack back to base and lowering us to 55 HP. We took it out the following turn, but since we had our attack dropped, the Aqua Tail failed to take out Glamora, and down went Dragonite. <sighs> Rip Dragonite, damn. That's disappointing. We almost made it through the league without losing a Pokemon, but Neuvern managed to finish the job. And now before we go and take on Area Zero, I have to go find a replacement for him. Is that shiny? It is! It is shiny! I'm eating my burrito! And, uh, hey, Shiny Axew, nice. Alright, cool, we like that. Shiny Axew appears before me as I ate my burrito, and I named it Olympic Games, which should definitely give away the naming theme for this video. I mean, at this point, it's pretty obvious. I evolved it shortly after into the incredible Black Haxorus and went to take on Arvin. However, we didn't need it as Arvin got rolled by Komoro's Drain Punch, and we went off to take on Cassiopeia. On our way there though, our Zwellius finally evolves into Hydreigon and just like the thing it's named after, has been trash all the way through until finally, at the end of the game, it's pretty good. We destroyed Clavel and then Cassiopeia with our boosted Komoo, which brought me to Nimona, and you wouldn't believe it. We did the exact same thing. I set up Dragon Dance, Drain Punched everything, except Skeledurge, who actually made me switch out. But this did give our three-headed boy a chance to shine. And with them all defeated, we could descend to the depths of Area Zero, fighting off Paradox Pokemon after Paradox Pokemon, and into the Zero Lab we went. It's here we find the Robot Lady, and it's time to save the world. She leads with Slitherwing, so I send out Boom the Neuvern to Acrobatics it. This of course one-shots it, and in comes Screamtail. This being a fairy type, I was going to terrestrialize flying to lose our dragon typing, but in the end, I saw that it had ice punch, so decided not to. We'll do whatever chip damage we can do with Mr. Boom here. Ice punch. We dodged it. Let's go. Okay, hang on. No, no shot. Two dodges. Oh. Okay, maybe I should terrestrialize. Yeah. I got a hat. And by a hat, I got three, four balloons on my head. Acrobatic. This should take it out, right? And we haven't wasted it. Okay, and we didn't waste our terrestrialization. Nice, I like that. Okay. In next was Fluttermane, who is a ghost fairy type, so I swap over to Komoro, who tanks a Thunderbolt. Oh, wait, you can't see me, Mystical Fire Misses. Iron Head. Let's go, one shot. I love that. Beautiful. Brute Bonnet then goes down to a Drain Punch, and in comes Sandy Shocks. I kind of want to use Haxorus. We haven't even used Haxorus, so I'm going to send it in. If it goes down, it goes down, you know? Earth Power. Shouldn't do too much. Right, it doesn't have any of the EVs or IVs that everything else has. So, Haxorus, you are on screen. Thank you for becoming a, a big black and red bladed boy. I'm going to save you because we might as well not uh, have a death if we can avoid it. Switch over to... Yeah, yeah, colors will be good, right? Earth power shouldn't do too much. Nice. Now we go for the energy ball. Boom! Down in one, baby! Let's go! Energy ball popping off like crazy. Roaring moon. The final Pokemon! I don't see a reality here where we don't go down, to be honest. But, who knows? Dragon Pulse. Oh, Colors hangs on! Hit him with the freaking Dragon Pulse, baby. Okay, it wasn't enough. That means Colors goes down next turn, unless I switch it to Neuvern, and then we outspeed it, take it out the next turn. We've done the battle flawlessly if we can get through this hit. Earthquake! The predict! Can't hit me if I'm flying, baby! Now all we need to do is hit it with a Dragon Pulse! 
Yes! We've done it! We beat Pokemon Scarlet using only shiny dragon types! Can you believe it? I I guess I can because um, you know, there's some of the most powerful Pokemon in in the games, but you know what? If that's not worth a like, I don't know what is. Hit subscribe, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. I have the perfect dragon Pokemon to defeat you with. I'm not scared of you, Karaidon, because I have shiny Karai! Wait a minute, that's not shiny!